All right. Welcome in, everybody. It is Memorial Day. You know, we salute those who paid the ultimate price for this country to give us the amazing game of baseball, which we're going to talk about today. And we're doing today's episode. It's not a full episode like we normally do. Daniel's not here, but we got to catch up with one of our guests because when we talked to him last, you know, he was still injured. He wasn't throwing. And now he's coming off throwing the best game of his life. So with that being said, Brooks Auger, how you doing today? Doing good, man. How are you? Man, blessed. You know, we're boys to get to talk to you. Obviously, the the brackets came out today, so everybody's stoked. College baseball should be on everybody's mind, along with being poolside, lakeside, or anything else in between. Why me and you are sitting here doing this and not doing either is beyond me, but it is what it is. I think it's just because we love this game way too much. But, you know, I got to ask right right out the gate, man, you know, y'all get the draw to Charlottesville, you know, uh, there's no such thing as a favorable draw, even though I feel it is because you can't overlook anybody. But I got to get your immediate reaction. You're going to Virginia. How do you feel about where you're going? We had this conversation in the uh, locker room after we found out where we were going and Johnny and some of the other guys stood up and they're like, I don't care where we're going. We're just going together and we're going to go play some baseball and win. So, I mean, it could have been Oregon State. It could have been Florida State. It could have been cross country. But uh, I think at this point, we've kind of figured it out that it doesn't matter where we go, who we're playing. We're just here to play baseball and play as hard as we can. So, Yeah. Is there any kind of a chip on the shoulder being that you guys aren't hosting? We know that you're worthy of it, but nothing's guaranteed. It's not like you were promised this. So, you know, I don't know if y'all were going into this uh, selection show thinking that you were going to be, but, you know, is there a chip on the shoulder? Y'all are going to be playing pissed off or, you know what, it is what it is. We don't care where we are. We're going to take care of business. So we've seen, obviously, the brackets and stuff that came out beforehand, uh, what might happen. And uh, we kind of had the idea that we would, but obviously didn't fall that way for us. I mean, we can't do anything but say we did it to ourselves. We lost some games that we shouldn't have early, and that definitely didn't help us in the long run. But, uh, I mean, I think at this point it's just put our heads down and play baseball as hard as we can because we got a lot to prove. I mean, the past two years – didn't even make the SEC tournament, so let alone a regional. So I think at this point we just gotta come out here and just prove that we deserve to even be here again. So yeah, I think if I could point, you know, if Mississippi State fans want to feel some kind of way, because you said that when you were saying it, I had an immediate series uh, that that came to mind, the Florida series. I don't like that series made me mad because I don't even like Florida, and y'all had them dead in the rights twice, and and you know fell apart. And those are the kind of games that don't seem as big then, but, you know, when you get into this conversation, right, if you have those wins, then, hey, you are hosting. So that's why you can't ever take a game for granted, um, you know, especially in conference like SEC. But nonetheless, you are where you are. But I want to talk about you. Before we even get into the game in Hoover, you know, in the fall, I got to see you pitching. You still weren't back yet, had conversations with you. I saw you still struggling, you know, coming back from injury. We know how hard it is to work your way back. You know, as the season has gone on, you know, how have you felt about your progression? Uh, Like you said, the fall was a complete new experience for me because I didn't play summer ball. I didn't play last year and uh, immediately kind of got put in the spot of we want you to potentially start. So uh, doing something that I hadn't done since my year in JUCO three years ago. So uh, I just had to relearn a lot. Like, that was the first time I had runners on base. Like, I threw to anybody that wasn't just a batter underneath a turtle on the field. So uh, it kind of changes the dy- dynamic of what you're doing. And then getting out here this spring, uh, found out I wasn't going to start, which, I mean, I was fine with it. I enjoyed the pen. I do whatever I need to. But uh, coming back into our atmosphere definitely was a little bit of a shell shock again. It was almost like being out there the first time when I was a sophomore. But, uh, I mean, it's definitely a learning curve. Uh, First, getting over an injury, but then allowing yourself to trust your arm again and then trusting yourself in a game setting and then doing it on the stage that we have. It's just a lot of tears. And uh, it took a while to kind of get it back and uh, struggled a little bit early, kind of found a groove. There's obviously ups and downs in a season, and I've had plenty of both. But uh, I say, really, it's just at some point you just got to say, whatever and just sling a baseball as hard as you can so 
Yeah, I mean, I felt like there's been more good than bad, uh, undoubtedly, even before this past week. But, you know, um, you know, even that first start coming when there wasn't a TBD, you had done great. The second one obviously didn't go your way. And then that's when they were like, go back to the uh, the TBD with the cowboy picture. You know, it's got got your uh, your blacked out picture with the cowboy hat, which I know you loved. Everybody loved. But it is a weird thing for Mississippi State. It's just better. It, it can be they know Brooks Auger is pitching, but just still label it TBD. Right. But yeah. um, a lot more good games. But I'll say this, you know, you talked about coming out. Um, as a starter versus bullpen, it really is a different thing. We've talked to so many guys who've done both and they prefer one or the other, or, you know, it works better. Like I'll use a guy right now, um, Griffin Herring, right? A lot of people want to see him as a starter, but he really just likes that coming out of the bullpen role and thrives and he can go as long as a starter, but it's the way he set up. It's, you know, it's, it's a mental thing for you you know, do you prefer being the starter? I know you'll do whatever coach asks you to do, but if you had an option, do you like being the starter or do you like being the guy that comes in and shuts the thing down? Uh, I really, I don't know. I say, I told Coach Parker earlier today, actually, I said, I kind of like it when you don't tell me I'm starting. Like, <laughs> I didn't find out from, uh, like, the first time I started at the Auburn weekend or whatever, I went three good innings and then struggled my fourth. But I found out between the two games, it was, hey, you're starting. Like, you got 20 minutes. And then Vandy was still TBD. And I found out at the field that morning, like, he walked up and handed me two baseballs. and was like, you got it. I had an idea, obviously, but I didn't know for certain. And then the only week I knew for a fact I was starting was Alabama. And I crapped the bed on that one. So, and then this past week was – uh the day before we were coming off the field and practice at Hoover and our SID walks up to me and he's like, Hey, like congrats on the start. And I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> so, I mean, I always, apparently I do better when I get information last minute, but uh, I don't know. I think as long as I can find a routine that fits me, like I really liked this last week where it was, you have 35 minutes, like you're on the field, 35 minutes game time, because I can kind of treat it like I'm coming out of the bullpen it's less time to think, less time mm -hmm. to overwork myself. It's I did my stretches and J bands and everything beforehand. And then when I got out there, it was just I picked up a baseball and I just rolled through my routine real fast. But uh, honestly, if I continue to throw like that, I'd like to be a starter. It's pretty <laughs> nice. But uh, at the same time, like I love a good adrenaline rush. But I mean, that Hoover crowd was a big crowd too. But uh, I don't know. It's, two completely opposite ends of the spectrum but i don't know like it's kind of hard to pick one really yeah no no doubt and i mean there there is no right or wrong answers i was just curious you know and for you you have to know going into the the regional especially pitching the way you did um and the amount of games you are probably going to have to play your number is going to be called upon probably to start um, so it's, it's going to be one of those things mentally, you're just going to have to push past. And I will say going back to the first episode, it is cool to see you and Pico both having so much growth and development. Obviously you're a step ahead of him right now. And as far as you came back earlier and everything, but seeing him pitch the midweek, seeing him get in there. Um, I love it because, you know, uh, both y'all have had to grind your way back, but this, this game in Hoover, man, um, I was supposed to go to it. Um, obviously things came up. And I'm watching this thing on TV, and, I mean, I even got your parents messaging me talking about, you messed up. And <laughs> I did because, you know, granted, I picked my family, right? I put my family first. but no real choice there. But but, but for, for what I do <laughs> and for supporting the guys like I do, especially you, uh, been in your corner from day one, like, I I missed it. I missed it. But it doesn't matter. I watched it on TV. Um, I'm, I'm texting people like, you know, what is going on? And, and it was great to get to talk to you afterward. We're obviously getting into a second. You told, you told me what the key was, but it's not just the eight innings of 13 strikeouts. It's the efficiency, right? Only 78 pitches thrown, only 12 balls. So talk to me about the pitching, right? Like what was working? How were you able to be, because I don't care if we're talking about Chase Burns, Hagen Smith, the guys me and you were talking about before the show, that kind of efficiency isn't seen by really anyone. So like what you did was just insane. So talk to me about what was working, what your mindset was, you know, what were you going to that, you know, just, okay, they can't hit it. I'm going to keep rolling with it. 
I say a lot of times uh, me and Parker kind of talk beforehand and get on the same page of like what pitches we're like, and he's in the bullpen with me. This feels good. This doesn't and kind of going over what we're going to do through the lineup. And then from there, he kind of just calls the game. Like, because at that point, we're on the same page. Like, very rarely have I ever shaken him off because, like, typically he calls a pitch, and that's what I was thinking in the first place. But uh, I don't know. I got down there and uh, got in the bullpen, and Parker looked at me, and he was like, I don't need a five-inning game. I don't need a six-inning game. He said, you treat this like I need you all out from the first inning. And you go as long as you can. If that's two innings, that's fine. Like, we just need you to be Brooks today. And I looked at him and I said, all right, I'm going to come in and just shut it down then. And just almost pretend like I was closing the game. I'm, like, I'm not going to try to throw 91, 92 and place my pitches. I just went in there with the idea of just, number one, I really don't like Ole Miss naturally. <laughs> and number two, like, I'm just going to throw this ball as hard as I can in the zone. I mean, I'm not even down the middle, just in the zone and just – get ahead from the get-go and uh I really like there's nothing that I could think back to and be like oh for some reason like everything just works like that I just threw strikes for some reason and uh I think a lot of it just came from the idea of just like there's a lot to prove like I've been gone I've been hurt I've been this I've been that we've never been I've never been to the SEC tournament before and uh to come out there and know that we're on a single elimination stage against our rival in the SEC tournament and I've had my ups and downs with starting, and my last one wasn't great, so I got put back in the pen. A lot of it was just like a, I got a lot to prove in this moment, so I'm just going to go out there and just sling it. And I'm going to put it as close to where I wanted to go as possible, but I'm just going to chunk it. And it kind of worked out for me, I guess. But, it, uh, it works, but, I mean, you know, the, the simplistic part about what you said, you know, just those strikes – a lot of times guys fail to do that and there's nothing that'll drive a coach more than those walks, right? You know, walks in general, but the lead off walks, they get themselves in jams, all those things. I watched it with LSU. It's ultimately what put them in, in the spot yesterday. Right. You know, they walk back to back guys and then Billy Amick hits the three run bomb, right? Like, you know, putting out, you, you got to throw strikes. And so if you are doing what you're saying, you're throwing your best stuff, but you're making sure you're throwing it across the plate. Man, you just – hey, especially with the defense you had behind them, you just trust them. But for you, you know, obviously they weren't, you know, putting a lot into play, 13 Ks. You know, was that something that you were thinking about in your mind? Were you were you aware of how many strikeouts you had going? Not at all. I mean, like, honestly, like, when I was in the moment, like in the game, like typically the people are like, oh, I look at the mid or I look at this. I kind of broke it down into sections. Like, instead of having a four-box section, I put, like – a cross arrow through my strike zone. And I was thinking, if I'm going fastball away, I just want to try to put it in that outer third. I'm not going to aim for a up, down, this, that. Like, I just tried to put, if we're going fastball up, I just need it to be close to that top line, whether it's in or out. If I'm going slider away, like, I just need to get it to that bottom third zone. That's all I had to do. And uh, I looked up at the end of that eighth inning. He came and told me, like, hey, you're done. Like, great outing. And I might have argued with him for a minute. I might have said, like, hey. I, you, I you, was you, arguing on Twitter was, as if he was going to uh, read what I was saying. I was like, 78 pitches. Why? Like, go the whole way. Yeah, I went down to him at some point, and I was like, hey, are you, like, sure I can't go back for this eighth or this ninth <laughs> inning? And he was like, we need to change it up. Like, you're going to get the lineup for the fourth time. And I was like, okay. Like, I had faith in him. Like, I have faith in my guy's bullpen. Like, that was, that was never a doubt. Like, obviously, I just wanted to complete it just for the satisfaction of doing it. But – uh I looked up when the next guy went out and they put my stat line up on the board. And I was just like, there's no way I got not like I got done. And I was like, I didn't walk a guy. And I really didn't even notice that during the game. Like, I guess mm -hmm. I think it was yeah, the fifth. The, the strikeout to walk ratio was real good. Yeah, he, the fifth inning or sixth inning, he was like, hey, you might want to throw a couple out of the stretch in your warm up pitches since you haven't been there. And it kind of hit me at that point. I was like, I really haven't had the throw out of the stretch at all so far this game in my first five innings or whatever it was. I mean, I mean, look at perception, right? Like, so Riley Maddox is a guest to this show too. And he was absolutely shoving on the other side and was having massive, his, his most successful game for W uniform, but even his stat line, obviously he had the zero up there, but when you talk about pitch count, when you talk about strikeouts, when you talk about walks, like wasn't even close to yours. Like that's why I was saying the efficiency that you had is just something that's unprecedented. You don't see. And so to have you and Riley, you know, like you said, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, opening night of Hoover, like that is that is the, that is the SEC dream world right there. You couldn't have better. And then 
to have Connor walk it off. But what I loved is what you may have been told now, but you don't know in real time, the camera's panning to you a lot. It's mm -hmm. showing you a lot in the dugout, watching on, and you are locked in. You're, you're, you're talking to your teammates, you're cheering. And then, you know, when Connor hits it, you're the first one out. Like, and I love it, man, because, you know, you, it wasn't you pitched and you were done. You weren't going to get the win, you know, whatever. Dude, you were all in for Mississippi State, and um, you were the first one, like I said, to be excited that it got done. So it sucks that you didn't get the win with everything you did, but obviously Coach brings in relief. It works out. Connor does his thing, and y'all have that moment. And you, you do exactly what you live to do, right? You send Ole Miss home. Um, sounds mean. Um, it's That's rivalry at its best, baby, like – you know what? I I love the I love the cameraman did the uh Ole Miss uh pitcher uh wrong, right? He he held it on him forever and showed that blank stare on his face, but that's what we live for, right? I went back and rewatched the game because I didn't have anything to watch it with. I didn't have my computer, so I went back and rewatched it when we got back and uh watched the whole game through just to hear what they had to say about both of us, me and Riley, and just kind of the the flow of the game. Cause I mean he like you said, he threw one of the best games of his life, too. Well, and he's come through a lot of injury stuff, just like you. Yeah. So it's, it's a cool story to see both y'all who worked so hard to get back. I say, I want to say, someone called me earlier and was like, they have, like, you have some record, and combined you guys broke some records. And, like, it's cool to, like, have done that with somebody else. Like, it'd be, it's always cool to get out there and strike out 13 in a blowout game, 8-1. to one. But to do it with a kid like that, from your rival school in a 1-0 game all the way into the ninth inning, like, that makes it that much more special. So, props to him for that, too. But, uh, I mean, I went back and watched it, and they – after the eighth inning when it was going to the ninth, it showed me in the dugout, and I got my head down on the uh, the railing. Oh, when you had the rail, yeah. And someone was – I don't know, someone said something about it. He must have just be so tore about his hitters not hitting. And I was thinking that was the last thing in my mind. I was, it, But I was, it does appear – because I know exactly what they're talking about. Yeah. It was when the third out happened is when you did it. it and I think it was – I, I know what it is. I know what it is. Look, I, everybody knows what it is. You were hoping to get the win, dude. Let's call it what it is. And there's well, no I, shame in that. My first thought was, man, I wish I was going back out there for the ninth inning. It was – that was honestly – the score of the game really hadn't processed for me at that point because, like, every inning I'd come in, I had my little routine. I'd come in, I'd take my cleats off, I'd make sure my sock hadn't ripped, I'd dump my box out of my stuff, I'd clean my cleat off, and I'd put a towel over my head and I'd sit down and I'd say a little prayer and then I'd sit up and I'd be good. And, like, I was – that was my routine the whole game. So, when I came out and I kind of realized, like, crap, it's 1-0. Like, it's really, like, this tight game at this point. And we got that third out, and I was like, I'm not going back. Crap. And I put my head down. And really, like, it was never a, oh, I hope we win it. Like, I knew it. If it was going to be 14 innings or nine, that we were going to come back and win that game. There was never a doubt. But, I mean, for Connor to do it that fashion made it that much better. So, Yeah, I mean, I, that that was the thing. That was the reality. I'm not mad at you or your team in the simple fact that, that you got the walk off. But let's talk about why you pitched the way you did it. And possibly why the hitters weren't hitting. You know, you told me there was a certain reason you were pitching that way. You know, talk to me about the Skittles, man. Um, is it always just a red thing? Was it just a red thing that night? You know, why the red Skittles? So, actually, that I've never been a huge Skittles person. And uh, here recently, I started hanging out with a new little group of friends. And uh, one of the girls was like, yeah, like, before I compete in my events, like, I only eat the red Skittles out of the bag. Like, you should try it. And tossed me a bag of red Skittles. So I just stuck them in my bag. And uh, we got going with it. And uh, that game day, I was like, I found out I was starting. I was like, might as well try it. So I, <laughs> it was five red Skittles in the bag. That's all I had. Only five red Skittles. And I just gave the rest of them out. I just passed the red Skittles out to the team. And uh, I don't know. It worked. So I'm going to keep doing it. I got to go to Walmart and buy but me. He didn't, the, the key is to those listening, the rest of the team didn't have the red Skittles. Therefore, he was yeah. the only one dominating. So um, we need red Skittles in Charlottesville, not for Virginia, just for Mississippi State. You know, well, usually I'm, I'm, I'm pushing Chinook seeds, right? But we're going Skittles, you know, this time around. You buy a big box and everyone gets a bag every game. So. Only no doubt. Hey, you know, I'm just saying, if Mississippi State gets red Skittles in there and y'all make a run to the national championship, you can absolutely see some big endorsement uh, setups there. But, yeah, I don't know. Kind of new. It was kind of last minute, kind of random, but I don't know. It worked for me, so I'm going to stick with it. No doubt. So what's the schedule like for you guys? You know, um, 
you practicing at home, obviously, but then when do y'all, will y'all head out and start practicing that way? Uh, from what I understand, we'll practice tomorrow, obviously. And I think we'll load our stuff on the bus to send it off. And then we'll practice Wednesday. And I think we'll take off Wednesday afternoon. And then we'll have Thursday to practice there. And then we'll get after it on Friday. And when do y'all start to, you know, watch film on St. John's? Is that something that's going to start as early as today? You know, when do y'all – because, you know, everybody's already talking Virginia, um, you know, and, and that's just because they they know how good Mississippi State is. They don't expect um, for you to lose to a team like St. John's, but you know how this game is. You can't overlook anybody. So, obviously, the team's got to start focusing on who's in front of them first. So, when do y'all start looking at the tape on St. John's? Uh, they've already started. Uh, I saw a text message a minute ago about – one of the guys in their lineup. So they've already been on that. I'm sure as soon as we found out some of the extra guys that weren't really going to lead practice within the first hour took off and started getting everything they could on them. But I can promise you they're probably going to have as much as they need by the end of the night. They're going to be on top of it right now. No doubt. Well, before I cut you loose, we're going to play this or that just because we always do. And we got a bunch of new questions since the last time you were on. And I want to give you a chance to plug or promote me and you. Uh, uh, obviously, one of the things that In Off the Bench has done is try to set up a lot of guests through NIL. Me and you have been fortunate to work together with a lot of things, so uh want to get a chance to do that afterward. But this or that is brought to you by one of those Chinook Cedary Eight Flavors Mild to Wild. Do you have your code yet? I do. Hold on, i got to pull it up. I think it's Auger 48. I'm almost positive. I think it is probably because it's your code for everything. that we got. I was going to pull it up right now. Well, while he's looking it up, Chinook Cedary, eight flavors, mild to wild. I have dill pickle in front of me, the grossest one, but there are a lot of people. Ty Floyd, one of my favorite players, loves dill pickle. I don't know why, but there is a flavor for everyone. I'm actually an OG type person, but get you the barbecue, cinnamon toast, Parmesan, whatever. What, what's your favorite flavor, Bruce? Honestly, number one, my code is Auger48. I got that one down, but... Here recently, I'm on some lemon pepper. I don't know what it is. It's just different. It's not a unique flavor. I haven't seen that one before. So I've had know. that yellow pepper. But you know exactly favorite. what I'm saying. Like every guest that I talk to that's had them, for the most part, it's never just the same answer. I think everybody. I think that's the best part about having eight flavors. Everybody has kind of what's their thing in them. You have guys who mix them together, right? Like, and that's why Daniel started doing the combinations. His favorite being, you know, the barbecue and cinnamon toast that he calls smoking toast. But so many different things you can do with the seeds. If I have any knock on Hoover, man, I had the best time. You've seen the pictures, videos. I texted you. I had to smuggle my seeds in. <laughs> and the reason this is a problem is they don't sell seeds. How does the yeah. SEC baseball venue, four of the teams there, are sponsored by Chinook Cedary? And I got a smuggle. Look, this lady, she looked at me, bro. She said, you can't take those in there. They're food. I was like, they're not food. They're seats. She's like, you still can't take them in. And I was like, are you going to let me walk in? Or are you just going to let me go down to the next one? And they're going to let me walk in. And she said, go ahead. They're not going to let you. Anyway, I'll walk to the next one. I put in my waistband. I don't think she knew what I meant. Anyway, I walked right in. Why you make me walk down to the next one? I'm getting in. Believe it. But you know, the, the seeds... Got to have seeds for the game, man. What are we doing here? I say my top two picks at Chinook right now are going to be lemon pepper and dill pickle. I say I know you you're not a big fan of the dill apparently, but I it's always a classic. But, I mean, I'm a, I'm one of the few people I know that doesn't like pickles on burgers and stuff too, and almost everybody I know likes them. So it's just I'm just not a pickle guy. That's yeah. all it is. But speaking of that, speaking of burgers, man, and it is Memorial Day. Would you rather grill out or go out to eat? If I'm with my friends and family, I'm grilling. All right, if you're grilling, I mean, we're going burgers and dogs, we're going barbecue chicken, we're getting the steaks. I mean, if you can throw anything on today, what are we doing? If I'm doing anything, I'm going to get me a big old ribeye. There it is. I did the uh, my chicken kebabs yesterday my wife made, but she threw a little curveball in there. She had some steak ones, too. Had Good. both money we're doing burgers and hot dogs we, we're taking a step backwards tonight but all, all along we're gonna be on the grill it's all gonna be good all right would you rather have you know what let's switch this this is a bad question for you you're a truck guy all mm. right so i was gonna say fast car luxury car Let, let's change this i have to pick fast car in that one too you just, you know what i'm not surprised about it at all and and you know that's the way i am um but let's see on the truck how you know what here it is would you rather have the truck 
or would you rather have the big boat? Now, obviously, you'll have to have a truck to pull the boat, but I'm saying, would you rather have the nicest truck or would you rather have a decent truck but the boat to pull behind it? That's a tough one. Because if I'm getting like a like a wake setter boat, that's going to be hard to pass on. But if you're saying I got like an unlimited budget to set my own truck, because <laughs> I'm using my truck every day. You can only use the boat for three months out of the year. No, I, lo- I love watching you boys, you know, all of y'all got nice trucks and it ain't because everybody's loaded either. It's just, you put value in mm-hmm. your truck. I, I know how you guys are and, and y'all care a lot about your truck and it, and it says a lot. It's, and, and it's the way y'all are raised and it's this way in North Mississippi. It's obviously that way in North Louisiana, where you're from Uh truck means everything. That's why I went to flip that question. Ain't no way if it's a truck or car thing, you're taking a car. So if I really get my choice, I get the boat or whatever. I'd split the down, down the middle and I'd say I have a pretty nice truck, but then I'd have me a pretty nice duck boat. I'd, yeah. I'd flip it down the dead center there. Yeah. Did you happen to see, uh, I know you don't do a whole bunch of social media as you're not supposed to, but did you see what Malazzo did during the SEC tournament? Um, mm-hmm. My man goes out there and has an amazing game. And then uh, it was against the South Carolina the first time and then goes bass fishing on the day off him and um, him and, uh, was it was it bear? Who do you go with? Anyway, caught fifty bass that day. Posted a picture, beautiful, and I was like, "My dude's living his best life because he's just like you, man. If he's not playing baseball, man, he's trying to be hunting, fishing, or whatever in between. He's the same way about his truck. Anyway, I was like, Alex out there living his best life. He got the hook up. I heard about it at the tailgate from his dad. Um, they knew they knew somebody had a had a fishing spot just right around the way. Ah, oh, nice. I wish I had that connection while I was there. Absolutely. It, it kind of reminds me of why Austin Riley didn't want to leave Atlanta. Look, everybody talked about all oh, the Yankees or the Dodgers are going to offer all this money. And I was like, my man has three different hunting spots within a couple hours of Atlanta. I was like, he don't want to leave because my dude's trying to be hunting or fishing. He is not trying to be in New York. Not at all. He's just like y'all country boy. Don't change. But here's one for you. That's a new one. It's, it's probably my favorite question that we have now. Would you rather trip and fall in public? Or pass gas in public? Trip and fall. Really, man? Trip and fall is embarrassing for an athlete. I mean, I think the other one's pretty bad, too. Man, I do it all the time and have no cares. I'm sorry. I mean, if it's silent, that's one thing. But if you let one rip and there's a pretty girl standing next to you. <laughs> man, you, like, you know me, my son is always with me. If I rip it, I'm pointing finger at him. Like, yeah, dog, you, you have, a, have a bail guy. I don't have that. <laughs> Dude, I have bail guy. I'm going to tell you. I don't know if you saw the pictures. My dude was killing it in Hoover. Like, golly, he was he didn't even have to have a seat. He was sitting on the railing mm. at the at right behind home plate on a non-seat because he'd been hanging out with the girls who worked there. And I think what's working for him, Brooks, is he doesn't like girls yet. So he's so innocent, right? Like he's not trying to holler. He's just hanging out. And so he's got that innocent friend card thing going. He's cute. A little turd. It'll turn for him one day. All right, for you, man, I got to know, classic maroon or black? Classic maroon. I figured that. I, I like the black, but, man, it's it's like, you know, every guest that we've had that says maroon. Last one was, was Mershon. It symbolizes Mississippi State and who you are. When you see the maroon, there's no doubt, you know, who's playing, who's on the field, and so – uh, I don't think there's a wrong answer. I'm kind of more new school. Um, I like when a lot of these teams were black. Like, I hated Tennessee rolled out black against us yesterday. I was like, God, does look good, but can't go wrong with either. Uh, so we don't have the the full-out nickel blacks anymore. So if we were yeah, still – that was my, They quit those right before you, before you the got there, before, didn't they? The year before I got here. But if we still had those, it might be up for debate, but – with all we got right now, those 85s are going to – You may not like them because I think about how, you know, Jacob Billingsley talked about how hot it was. He was always the Sunday starter. And right now, you currently are in the Sunday starter role in a pitcher just like him. You might be feeling like Billingsley can feel it. It's a little too hot for that. Yeah, I'm a little – I sweat a little bit. So, Black might not be my friend. But... There you go. All right. We asked you this once upon a time. We kind of reformat. We just made it simple. Would you rather, rather wrestle a bear or a tiger? Uh, hey, after this year, I'm taking the Tiger because I put them down. So, <laughs> we got them down this year. We took two from three out of the Tigers. Uh, I heard that. I like you going to take shots. I, I see that. I already got one win. I think I can do it again. 
Mm, there you go. I see you. Okay. Well, we got the same two seed you did. <clears throat> <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. Last question. You did have this question. Let me reform. This is the one question that always stands. I'm going to keep it simple. You're going into the draft this, this year. Very simple, Brooks. Would you rather Mississippi State make a run and win a national champ championship or keep it real with me, dude? Would you rather be the number one pick in the MLB draft this upcoming summer? Honestly, I'd rather win the national championship. You're lying. You're lying. Oh. Uh, see, for me, though, the way I view it is, like, out of high school, I wasn't a big draft guy. Out of JUCO, I wasn't a big draft guy. Like, I've never been a guy who was ever projected to be on that stage. So, for me, like, I for me, it's like I hit a point where, like, I've done something that I never expected myself to do. So, I'd rather have But I know what you aspire to do. I know you want to throw on the next level. And if you're getting the first pick, not only are you going to be rich, you're obviously going to be highly coveted and being do, doing big things. But it's all right. You can lie, you can lie to me and everybody. Make the money. And you can move up real fast, even if you're not the first pick. So, If you could be drafted by any organization this this offseason, who would it be? I want to know that. Like, who who who's the organization you would want to be with? So I don't think I should be able to say that because that might get me in trouble. But I do know my dad's team is the Cubs, so he would be kind of cool with that one. You actually are allowed to say it because you're not actually uh, into the. Uh, I don't want to the draft yet, but that. but what you can do is do that, and they hear it and they say, you know what, this dude is absolutely slinging the ball, and he wants to pitch for us. Let's go get him. But you know what, I let I let it slide. Let's get off. Well, let's talk about, you know, the deals you got going. Let's start with the Bell Smith. I'll do that one for you. Obviously, the Bell Smith, the best in the game. I hate that you aren't at Duty Noble to where y'all can be ringing the bells. Doesn't change being able to get your bell, custom bell. You can take it um, to the game, get it signed by Brooks. My man, I've never seen him turn down, signing down anything, especially uh, a custom bell. Get your player bell. Helps him through NIL. You can find Bell Smith. Go to Maroon and Company in Starkville, or you can check him out on all social media platforms. But he's also, man, Swamper. I just got you the new gear. How's it been working out for you? I probably I, – I take about five, six shirts with me every time I take a trip, and at least three or four of them are Swamper shirts every time. There I've you go. worn them out already. So I've seen pictures of my man hunting, fishing, you know, whatever with them. It's Augur 48 for that, right? You got a you got a you got a swamper supply. You can get uh, any of the clothing there. They got they got the hats too. Um, he's gonna have a say. Uh, he's actually helped them develop in some new rope hats. He said, "Look, hey, Ooh, yeah. the trucker hats are great." Brooks said, "Hey, we gotta get some rope hats. Those are what are in." So they're gonna be making a change on that. But the code for that is Auger Forty Eight. We obviously brought up um, you know Chinook Cedary. So jump on that. And then what am I forgetting, Brooks? We got athletic so athletic collection. Athletic collection. I mean, he's got a poster. I, it's missing off my wall. I need that. As a matter of fact, he's got about. Uh, you don't want to put me up there. It's whatever. No, Brent's got about six that he owes me. He he was actually waiting to get me the Jake Brown autographed one, um, because he was doing an autograph series, and that's one of the ones he's supposed to send me. But yeah, the athletic collection, Brent, and the athletic collection. Brooks is one of the only Mississippi State players, so, uh, you know, maybe Brooks isn't your favorite player. He's actually one of the limited options, so you need to <laughs> do it anyway. But no. Um, if you have a kid that's a Mississippi State fan, this is a great opportunity to get a Mississippi State poster to put on their wall. Once again, bring it to the game. Brooks will sign it, take care of you. No extra charge. Um, and it just helps this this young man. You know, um, these players, you know, everyone should be aware of 11.7 by now. And then everybody hears about NIL. But um, I'm an LSU fan. And I can honestly say our guys get paid a lot more than the other guys. Okay. Uh, Mississippi State doesn't just have money falling off trees, and these guys aren't getting paid bukus of money like you think. And then ultimately, you know, even when Brooks takes his next step, you know, towards the pro level, he's not going to be the first pick, and he's not going to have $10 million. So posters, bells, shirts, not only do you win by getting an amazing product, but you get to help my man out and, you know, be able to help him. All the hard work he's putting in, take care of him. But with that being said, is there anything else I missed that you want to plug or promote, Brooks? I think those are our four. Those right. are four. Shout out to mom and dad. I I love okay. I love being friends with them. They're your biggest fans. Uh, they were so proud the other night after after what you did. I don't think they stopped posting about it. And then you oh, you made the All SEC uh, uh, tournament team. Like uh, I, I love seeing just how proud they are. Of you. 
I say I looked up in the stands and my dad was standing up there waving his hands at me and he was crying. And I, my family's, we call it the auger blood, but we all got the little sensitive side. So I start crying and then I have an interview right after. And then as soon as I mentioned God, I start crying okay. and it just broke down so fast. It was just all over the place. Well, but, that's what it's all about though, man. They've watched you your whole life and to, to see it come on a big stage like that. I mean, they were at the ball fields when it was just, you know, 30 people. And now here we are. So it's really cool for them, but man, shout out to your family. Shout out to the Mississippi State fan base, and I wish you nothing but the best of luck in Charlottesville. You know how it is, Brooks. If you need anything, man, just let me know. Same thing for you. Absolutely. Well, that's Brooks Auger, everybody. We're going to be back tonight. I hadn't even told him this yet, but our guest tonight, Will Furnish, the guy who hit a home run off of him in Hoover. That was not planned. It actually <laughs> was already on the books. But if you like hearing Brooks' story or you just like hearing Average Joe's talk X's and O's, please like and share the podcast on Facebook, retweet us on Twitter, listen and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and Anchor. As always, ratings, comments, hugs, love, feedback, all the good stuff is welcome. We'll see you guys back tonight. Remember, in the meantime, strong body, sharp mind, grit and grind all the time. We are out.